with 1 Thessalonians. This was the scripture I read last Sunday. We're going to read it again as our text. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, beginning at verse 13. If you'll find that and stand with me. I know Zach made you stand a long time. and Just stand up a little bit longer and I'll let you sit for a couple hours while I preach. So. The Apostle Paul talking to the church in Thessalonica. He said, For this cause also thank we God without ceasing. Because when you receive the word of God which you had heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. <laughs> For you, brethren, became followers of the churches of God, which in Judea are in Christ Jesus. For ye also have suffered like things of your own countrymen, even as they have of the Jews, who both killed the Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us. And they please not God, and are contrary to all men forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved, to fill up their sins always. For the wrath is come upon them to the uttermost. But we, brethren, being taken from you for a short time in presence, not in heart, endeavored the more abundantly to see your face with great desire. Wherefore, we should have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. For ye are our glory and joy. Let's pray. Father, we just come in the name of Jesus today. God, we are your people. We've gathered because we need you. All of us, there's not one here that doesn't need to hear your voice, that needs a course correction, a direction that we need to go, a tomorrow that's filled with you and your presence. God, that's what we need. God, we need to be able to focus on you, not just today, but every day. To hear your voice, God, your leadership. In this hour that we live, God, we need you desperately. And we call upon you. Because we know you hear. We know you love us. You died for us. I pray, God, for all of us this morning. That you'd bring life, hope, strength, and help to everyone, God, this morning in this place. Let us hear you today. And we give you praise in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated this morning. My message is overcoming obstacles by faith. The Apostle Paul talks about being Satan hindered us. He said, I wanted to come back and visit you. You're my church. You're the people. You're like my own children in the faith. And I wanted to come and see you once and again, more than one time. I planned on coming, and it was the will of God, but I didn't get there because Satan hindered me. No matter what is going on in your life, you've got to know that we're going to come against the enemy of our soul. He will try everything to hinder you from moving forward in the things of God. If you have been bound by drugs or alcohol or any of those things, any kind of addiction, you can come and feel good in the presence of God. But when you walk out that door, you better know that the enemy is going to be there. He is going to try to tempt you in every way that he possibly can. We have to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might, not ours. 
We can't walk in our wisdom. We can't walk in man's uh, strength. We have to have God's strength. And we have, to be, we have to have a made up mind that I am going to follow you, God. No matter what. I was thinking as we were worshiping about my friend Kirk Wallace who passed away. He was a great friend. I know all of the California folks know Kirk. He was a I met him after he got out of prison, but I, I remember when Zach moved out there, Teresa, I didn't know he was going to move out there. I, I knew he went out to see Tiffany because he was in love, and so, but Teresa came home without him, and she said, she called me and said, he's staying here, he's got a job, he's got a place to live. I said, where's he going to live? She said, with this guy that just got out of prison. I'm like, what? What is going on out there in California? And so... Later, after I did get to go out, I met Kirk, and I heard a story about him. He had been in prison for five years, had been shot, all kinds. I mean, he was on drugs and, you know, all of that stuff in that lifestyle. But five years in prison, he got saved in prison. And when he got out of prison, he was waiting for the church van from Living Waters to come and pick him up. And he walked out the door, and there was a woman there, drove up, good-looking woman, and said, come on and go with me. And, and five years in prison, Kirk was a nice-looking man, too. But he said, no, you go on. I'm waiting for the church van. And so she drove off, and the church van drove up. That was a, I'm telling you, I just know from my own heart, that was a turning point in his life. He never went back. He walked with God. God blessed him immensely. I mean, he ended up becoming a millionaire. And the guy was, had a beautiful family. But he got cancer. Passed away. But I know where he's at. But you understand, when he walked out of that prison, what was waiting on him? The devil knew. The devil knew, and he sent somebody. So you have to understand, that woman wasn't the devil, but she was led by the devil. The people in your life that are causing you great grief are not the devil, but they're led that way. That spirit of the Antichrist is prevalent in our world today. And we have to understand, he's after you. He's after your faith. He's after who you will be. He's after the people that you will touch. He, he is after that. He knows his time is short. He knows Jesus is coming back. And we have to understand that there are things that are going to hinder your walk. But we can't let that happen. We have to be strong in the Lord and the power of His might and walk in what God has given us. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, this is a story that is... I mean, everybody that knows anything about church knows about David and Goliath. But I want to talk about a few things out of this story. 1 Samuel 17, verse 17. Now you have to understand, in chapter 16, Samuel has come and anointed David as king. He is going to take over for Saul. He's a young man, the youngest of Jesse's boys, and he's out in the field. He comes in, he anoints him, pours oil over his head. He said, you're going to be the next king. God has already established that. But then he goes right back into the field again. Taking care of sheep. He goes into the, the king's palace there because Saul has the demons that he can't get off of him. And David goes in and plays the harp for him. And as he plays and, and worships on the harp, he gets peace. That just lets you know right there how important worship is. That the enemy will flee from that. So if the enemy comes and attacks you, start to worship God. You know, get off of the <clears throat> crazy music that we listen to sometimes. That, you know, if you're country and western fans, I know Texas, a lot of country and western fans. But if, if all you're listening to is sitting on my bar stool crying in my beer, you know, because, you know, somebody left me, you know. What was that song? There's a tear in my ear from crying over you, dear, or something like that. I don't know. But 
That's really uplifting. The devil's not going to flee on those songs, I can tell you that. And I like some, I mean, I like all genres of music, and I like some country music songs, and every once in a while it's okay to listen to them, but be careful. When you are going through difficulty, be careful what you are allowing in your ear. Who's talking to you? Who are, who is, who are you allowing to speak into your life when you are going through difficult times? If it's not somebody that knows this word that can speak life, because Proverbs tells us life and death are in the power of the tongue. Life and death, you speak, I speak, other people speak life, and they speak death in what's going on in your life. And when you allow that to happen, be careful, be cautious. Verse 17, And Jesse said unto David his son, Take now for thy brethren an ephah of this parched corn and these ten loaves, and run to the camp of thy brethren, and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand, and look how thy brethren fare, and take their pledge. Now Saul and they and all the men of Israel were in the valley of Elah, fighting with the Philistines. David rose up early in the morning and left the sheep with a keeper, and took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as, they, as the host was going forth to fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hand of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and spake according to to the same words, and David heard him. And all the men of Israel, and they saw the man fled from him and were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have you seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killed him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to this man that killeth the Philistine? Taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. Verse 28. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, Eliab's anger was kindled against David, and he said, Why camest thou down hither, and with whom hast thou left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thine heart, for thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? Now immediately after David saw this Philistine and the cause that came, he was like, why, is, why are the army of God just standing here doing nothing? And God placed within his heart to do something. And his brother immediately stood up and said, what are you doing? Where are those little sheep you're taking care of? What are you, what are you up here for? Little smart aleck, what are you doing up here? Now his brother already knew that he was he had the oil put on him, not, not Eliab, his oldest brother. He, it, was, it was David. He saw that, but yet he took no thought in it, just like sometimes brothers and sisters and brothers and brothers do. It's like, you're nobody. Jesus had the same problem in his own city. They said, who is this guy, this, the carpenter's son? So he couldn't do a lot of miracles, the Bible said, in his own town because they didn't believe him. And now his brothers come. I just want to tell you today, a lot of times when God speaks to you to move out, and this happens a lot to young people. By the way, I love our young people that come on Wednesday nights and that are here today. Because I know you're looking for hope. You're looking for an answer for your life. And it is Jesus Christ. But you can bet, because it's happened to me, I understand. When you 
give your life to Christ and you start moving in a different direction, if your family doesn't serve God, they are going to say something to you. What are you? Who are you? Who do you think you are? Because when people are doing sin and they know it's wrong, and then you step out into a relationship with Jesus Christ, just your presence bothers them. You understand that? Just the presence of God in that environment bothers them. And they will start to speak down on you. Be ready, because some, God's called some of you out of the darkness into light to do great things for God. You don't know what that is, and it's a good thing you don't know. But I'm telling you, God knows, and if you follow Him every day, there's going to be things that are going to happen in your life that will be magnificent. You won't even understand all that God's going to do. And I'm telling you, I just know it. I've seen it in my own life. God does things that you can't even imagine that He would do. That's the God we serve. But there's going to be those voices that are going to come. Men are going to try to stop you. And a lot of times it's your own family. It's people that you really care about. It could be mom and dad. What are you doing? Who do you think you are? Are you better than us? The hardest ones are those that are religious. That go to church all the time. And then you have a different relationship with God. <laughs> like I know Him and He knows me. I don't just go through the motions of religion. And you step in and start doing things, they will come against you. That's not the way we do it. We have to understand the enemy is out to destroy your walk with God. And a lot of times it has nothing to do with you, really. It has to do with your children or people around you or your grandchildren or somebody. The devil knows God's hands on people. People that you might come in contact with. When, God, when somebody prays, it's just like last week when my niece was talking about being in college and she left her home and went into that college environment and all she wanted to do was get drunk and party because that's, she finally got away from her family church every week and doing all she wanted to do what she wanted to do and yet the prayers of other people praying for her changed her direction put people in line that she didn't even know with that college to come up and speak into her life and change her direction you see when we're when we're praying we don't know what God's gonna do you don't know who he's going to use and he could be, you could be an answer to somebody else's prayer somewhere that's praying for a loved one that you're going to meet. You hadn't met yet, but you're going to meet them and you're going to turn their heart back to Christ. And the devil knows, i got to stop this. Something is going on. People are praying. And i got to stop it. Negative words will come. But I like what David said, is there not a cause? Do you not see? There's a whole army of men standing up here that know God, but they're not moving. And in our world today, the church is that. We have an army of churches and half of them aren't moving. They're just standing there. We have to be the ones to step out by faith because this world's going to hell. Verse 33, David finally gets to the king. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for thou art but a youth, and he's a man of war from his youth. Now he, get, he leaves his brother, goes into somebody else that's more powerful, and what does he say? Same thing. You can't do it. I've been told that multiple times. You can't do it. I remember when I worked at Brookshire's and I was an assistant manager and I went to work for a store director that was, they, 
said he'd been there a long, long time, and they said he, was a, he trained guys for other stores. And so I went to him, and I got there. We got along fine for a little while, but what happened was the district manager who sent me and his district manager, you know, the same guy, and he sent me over there, and we were friends. We went to church together. We had been friends for a long time. That's why I went to work for Brookshire's because of him. He was our song leader at the church and Sunday school superintendent. We went fishing together. We, we, you know, we had a relationship. Our families did. And he, this store director walked in one day and saw me eating in a restaurant with my su- supervisor. And at that point in time, everything went downhill. He didn't like me. He told me to my face I'd never be a store director. He told the district manager I wouldn't be a store director. I heard things that he had said about me. I went to another store after I left there, and what happened was we all had our coffee cups piled up on the corner, and he drank coffee every morning. And one day I was in a hurry, and my coffee cup was sitting up high. He had a coffee cup he had had for years and years. It was a little tuxedo-looking coffee cup. And I reached up to get my cup, and I hit his, and it knocked it off, and it shattered in a thousand pieces. And the office cashier was over by the safe, and he was over here. And when I pulled it, it, I mean, shattered on the floor. And he turned and looked at me, and she went, (gasps) like that. And I stood there for a minute, and he just looked at me and said, well, sweep it up, clean it up. And I said, so I got a broom and I swept it up and I said, walked over the trash can. <laughs> shouldn't have said it, but I said, shouldn't we have a ceremony or something? You know? And they transferred me out. But anyway, if I'd have known that, I'd broke his cup the second day I was there. But, you know, he told the store director that I was going to. I'd never make a store director. Can I just tell you? I was a store director 19 years for that company. You just, you do, you don't listen to what men say. You can't listen to what men say. They can't define you. There's only one person. I was a Christian, and I knew the only one that gave me that job, the only one I worked for at that job was Jesus Christ. It wasn't Mr. Brookshire. It was Jesus. The only promotion I got was from Jesus, not from a man. I could write a book on the things I've seen that God's hand was in in my life, doing things that I never imagined He would do. I'm thankful He didn't show me ahead of time. It would have freaked me out. But I can tell you, God is, when He calls you, just follow Him. Just follow Him every day. And just watch. The the exciting part is following God every day. Because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. And it's always going to be good. Once you get out of the darkness, I'm thankful for the dark times. I'm thankful for the pain that has come. Because that's when, just like Patrick's note said, in the darkness, in those dark places, in that valley when you can't hardly lift your head, that's when God becomes so real and you understand He loves you and He'll pick you up and He'll move you out into a life that you never thought you could have. We can't give up. We just serve Him. David said unto Saul, Verse 34, thy servant kept his father's sheep. There came a lion, a bear, and a lamb out of the flock, to to take a lamb out of the flock. And I went after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he hath defied the armies of the living God. David said, moreover, the Lord hath delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the Paul the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. He said, You can't go. And then David said, Listen, let me tell you about my past. Let me tell you about my history. Let me tell you about what God's already done. Let me tell you about the giants I've already beat. Amen. This is just another one. My God can do anything. 
That's what David was saying. We have to look back on what has God done? We forget, don't we? We get into trouble. We forget what He delivered us out of already. But we have to remember that. David was prepared for that day. He was prepared for that battle. That giant had no idea who he was going up against. He thought it was a little kid who didn't know anything. But God had already sent a bear. He had already sent a lion. And he had already been with him. And he said, you can do it, boy. Get out there. Grab those rocks and go. Some of us need to pick up some rocks. And Saul armed David, verse 38, with his armor. And he put on a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mail. And David girded his sword upon his armor and essayed to go. For he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off. He took his staff in his hand and chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. Put them in a shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near the Philistine. And we know the story. He smote him with that whack. But you understand, he couldn't take what Saul said you have to have to fight this battle. Don't listen to men, and don't take their methods. Religion is a religion of methodology. They'll tell you how to do it and how you've got to do it. If you don't do it this way, you can't do it. I like what David said when he was here preaching, David Owens, and he was talking about that, where sometimes people tell you if you don't get up at 5 o'clock in the morning and you don't have this cup of coffee sitting over there and you don't have this deal doing, and you can't talk to God because that's the way I did it. And if I did it and God came, then that's the way you got to do it. That's not true. It's just not true. We, We put our methods on people. You have to serve God this way. You've got to do it this way. You got to listen to this music. You got to do this. You got to do this. I found in my life that I go against the grain a lot. I'm a pastor that goes against the grain quite a bit. I'm thankful for the teaching and the training of men of God who taught me over the years. But God is the one who gives the methods. He gives the ability. He's the one that leads us. We can't fight the battle we're in fighting with somebody else's armor. We have to have what God gives us. If it's just a rock, let it be a rock. I remember going to pray for a while at where we used to have a camp over in Clifton. and I was walking down the road praying one day, and I picked up a rock. And it, was a, a, it looked like a marble. It, I still have it. It was just a perfectly round rock. And all of this rock that they had brought out for a road. And I picked it up, and I'm walking praying. And God said... Let me tell you about that rock. You ever talk to God like that? Let me tell you about that rock. He said, I made that rock. It took thousands of years to make that rock. I'm sitting there looking at it. He said, it was in a stream and water. And then it broke loose and it rolled down that stream. And it just kept rolling until it He said, I formed it, and it was perfectly round. And I left it there. And then they dug it up, and they brought it for a road, and they put it there. He said, I brought it there, I put it there for you. He said, I did the same for David, those five stones. He didn't just pick up five, any stones, those stones I put there. Those stones I made for that giant. Those stones were were made for thousands of years before that giant ever even got there. They had been in brooks rolling down that stream. They would got there. I put them there. God said, son, before you ever step out, I've already prepared everything you're going to need for the battle. Already prepared it. 
Time's nothing to our God. We understand. You have to understand that. Time is nothing to Him. He's not bound up in our time frame. So often I wish He was at times. So He'd answer when I want Him to answer, but He doesn't. Because He's outside of time. But understand this. Whatever you need for tomorrow's battle, He's already got it prepared. It's already there. It's already made. It's already ready. You don't have to worry. Well, God, I need this. I need this. He said, I already know it. I've been knowing it for years. You're going to need it today. But I have it for you. All you got to do is call upon me. I'll give it to you. It's right here. Prepared for today. In the book of Joshua, chapter 3, Joshua has come out, Moses is dead, and they have to cross the Jordan River. And he says this in verse 8, And thou shalt command the priests that bear the ark of the covenant, saying, When you are come to the brink of the water of Jordan, you shall stand still in Jordan. And Joshua said unto the children of Israel, Come hither and hear the words of the Lord your God. Verse 15, and as they that bear the ark were coming to the Jordan, and the feet of the priests that bear the ark were dipped in the brim of the water, for Jordan overfloweth all his banks at time of harvest. But the waters which came down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far from the city of Adam, that is, beside Zaratan. And those that came down toward the east of the plain, even the salt sea, failed And were cut off, and the people passed right over against Jericho. And the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of Jordan. And all the Israelites passed over on dry ground until all the people were passed clean over Jordan. You have to remember that the devil is against you. You have to remember that men are going to try to persuade you that you're not able to move with God. No matter who it is, there's going to be men that's going to say that. Then they're going to try to, if you do go, they're going to try to make you go in their way, in their mode, in their method. You have to understand what God has done in your past and what he's going to do in your future and what he's doing right now just like that song we might not see it we might not feel it but our God's working he's always working he's already in our tomorrow one of the things that I liked about Joshua in this is those priests he told them I mean he comes out Moses is dead they come here he's already been here once Him and Caleb have already been here before. They've already walked this before. And the failure of the people, of the men around him to to seize on what God said that was his cost him 40 years. He's come back and he remembered what the failure was. So sometimes we need to remember what the failure was of our life has been if you got sideswiped somewhere down the way and you made wrong directions and and you took wrong directions from people or from yourself and you went the wrong way remember God's a, a God that's gracious and he forgives us of all of our sins and he doesn't remember them but we need to we need to remember why we went the way we went, and never do it again. God caught the woman in adultery who had, in the act of adultery, he told her, I don't accuse you. I don't condemn you. But go and sin no more. Don't do it again. This world gives us all kinds of titles. It'll, it'll label you with a label from 
You're hyper when you're in, a kid in school. They start giving you medicine for it. I've always said it's just lazy teachers. I know i got teachers in here, but, you know, give them something. Make them sit down, you know. Back in my day, they did give us something. It wasn't medicine. It was a whipping. Lord, we need that again. Go to the principal's office and bend down and grab your ankles. I had to do that. We start out giving people labels. And I, I'm, I want you to understand something because I know, I know the medical field. I know we need stuff. I take medicine. But we give, the devil is good at giving titles to people and they, they hold on to that. They, there's an excuse I have this problem because of this. This is my, I'm, I'm this or I'm that. And so I take medicine for that, and if I don't, if I fail to get my medicine that day and I just happen to kill everybody around me, that's, it's just my medicine. You know, I forgot it, and that's just the way I am, you know. We, we make excuses because we think I mean, there's not anybody in here, if I ask you, do you think God can heal everything, you'd raise your hand and say, yes, He can. But if they've given you a title, can He heal that? I'm not talking to just one person in here either. I'm telling you, I know. I know our world we live in today. I know what they tell you. I had one doctor that put me, when I was having heart problems, put me on a medicine, a very expensive medicine for my, it was a blood thinner, and I said, how long am I going to be on this? He said, the rest of your life. I'm thinking, I don't like that. I went to another doctor that did my surgery, my heart. And I got done. He said, everything looks good. We got it fixed. He said, three months, come back. If everything's still good, I'm going to take you off all your medicine. I said, even that one? He goes, yes, even that one. You don't need to be on that. If your heart's beating right. But you see, two medical doctors... One of them said, you're going to be on it the rest of your life. One of them's not. I went back to that doctor, and they wouldn't let me in because of VA stuff. So I took myself off of it because I knew he would, and I hadn't had any problem. God is a healer. He uses doctors to heal us. He uses medicine. I take medicine when I have to. Not against that, but I'm just, I'm talking to all of us today. Don't put God in a box. Don't say he can heal this. He, oh, if somebody has cancer, he can heal that. But he can't heal this. I have, you know, this. I've been crazy since I was a kid, so I, he can't heal that. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Yes, he can. Psalm 1611 says this, Thou wilt show me the path of life. I read it last week. In thy presence is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. I want to read a scripture to you. Because I was praying this morning. I didn't mark it, so I have to find it. But uh, it's a favorite scripture of mine. And it's Joshua 1 9. Some of you may know it. You know, Joshua, God came to him and he said, 
after Moses died, and he said, Joshua, as I was with Moses, because Joshua was with him the whole time, he said, I'm going to be with you. As I was with him, I'll be with you. The miracles you saw with him, you'll see with me. I'm going to do that for you. And then he says this in verse 9 of Joshua 1. He said, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. I want you all to read that with me because God's talking to us this morning. And I felt this this morning. God said, I'm going to talk to my people through this word today. This is a supernatural word. To some of you this morning, this word's going to be life to you because you're facing things that are fearful to you in your future. But God's telling you this morning, have not I commanded thee, be strong. Of a good courage, don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed at what you see or what people say. God said, I'm going to be with you whithersoever you go. Wherever you're going, I'm going to be with you. So I want you all to stand with me this morning. I want you to read this. Some of you this morning, I want to pray for you before we read it. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come this morning. God, I know what you spoke into my heart this morning about this, this verse right here. It was for Joshua, but it's for the Joshua's in this house this morning. God, I pray this morning, Lord, release your strength and your power. As they read this word this morning, release it into their life, God, in a mighty way. Holy Spirit of God, make it real to them. Let them know they're not walking alone. They're not walking through darkness by themselves. They're not walking into a place where you're not. Oh, God, you're there. You're with them. No matter where they go or what happens, you're with them. God, if we know that, just as Joshua knew that, no matter how many walls of Jericho he had to go through, no matter what had to happen, God, you were there with him. God, you will be with your people. And we give you praise for that today. Let's read this together. Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Hallelujah. 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 This morning, I'm just going to ask you to come. If that meant something to your heart, I know there's got to be somebody in this place or God wouldn't have told me that you needed to hear that today because of what you're facing tomorrow. He's in your tomorrow. These altars are open this morning. I ask you to come.